Hello, and welcome to AIM International's preparatory tutorials for the Information Certification Exam. I'm Steve Weissman, Principal Consultant at Holly Group and a certified AIM training instructor in the realm of content process and information management. I'll be your guide as we review the exam's major domains of expertise, and I'll tell you all you need to know to earn that passing grade. Today's subject is content management, a key part of this special certification which AIM created to support you as you solve your organization's existing information-related problems and plan for its future. For 60 years, AIM has been the leading nonprofit association, helping users understand how to best manage documents, content, records, and business processes. This module reviews the different file formats you're likely to encounter and some of the key differences among them. Part of the Capture and Manage Knowledge Domain, one of six within the certification program, it covers Office Files, PDF, XPS, JPEG, PNG, and GIF. Many organizations capture and keep their documents in the native format in which it was created, be it Microsoft Word or Excel or one of the Open Office functions. These are usable by a great many people and support metadata tagging as well, but backwards compatibility can be an issue without the appropriate converters. So a lot of companies turn to PDF which is one of the most widely used formats around and for better or for worse is often considered a default content format. This isn't necessarily a bad thing especially since this original Adobe creation was sanctioned by the ISO as an official standard in 2008. But depending upon your situation and the nature of your content a native or other image format may better serve your purpose. PDF for portable document format is notable for its ability to faithfully represent documents created in pretty much any application, but to do so independent of that original application, any hardware or operating system. The latest versions routinely handle electronic forms and digital signatures and have the ability to authenticate and secure sections of a document as well as the whole thing. So it does indeed have a firm place in the information management world. XPS is Microsoft's entry into the same sweepstakes, but it doesn't have nearly the footprint PDF does. A functional quasi-competitor to PDF, it stands for XML Paper Specification. Though it supports XML versioning and extensibility, it doesn't support dynamic content, such as content contained in a drop-down menu on a form. Still, it has been accepted as a standard as well, in the form of ECMA 388. TIFF is the tagged image file format, and it's good for archiving because files can be edited and saved without losing compression. Tags may also be used to handle multiple images and data within a single file. Many organizations thus choose TIFF for their scanning applications, though the file sizes can be large, especially for color images. So there's a trade-off there that has to be considered. JPEG, PNG, and GIF are other common image formats that you may need to manage. JPEGs are used most often in digital photography and feature some variability in terms of balancing quality and file size, as illustrated by the picture on this slide, which shows what happens to an image after being compressed with successively higher loss compression ratios as you go from left to right. PNG and GIF were designed for transferring images on the Internet, not for professional quality print graphics. As such, they're more limited than JPEG in terms of handling color, but can be used for line drawings and text that do not require higher resolution. GIF, by the way, dates back to the early days of the web, having been introduced by CompuServe in 1987, and it can still be used for simpler images like graphics or logos that have solid areas of color. This module has reviewed the different file formats you're likely to encounter and some of the key differences among them. These include Office Files, PDF, XPS, JPEG, PNG, and GIF. Next, you may wish to review content management processes for working groups and public access requests. The material you have just reviewed is part of a broader program of study that prepares you to take the Information Certification Exam. This proctor test consists of 100 multiple choice questions and is delivered electronically by Prometric. You'll have two hours to complete it, and upon passing, you'll earn a professional certification that's valid for three years. For more information, 
please visit www.aim.org slash certification. Thank you.